All right, good afternoon everybody and thanks for tuning in to another video. As you might remember last week we had that epic app concept video of Peter McKenna and you guys really liked that video and design and sent me a bunch of questions on how I prototype this app in Figma. You want a prototype in breakdown, you want to see my process of prototyping an app like that, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing now. Real quick before we dive in, please keep in mind that this is not going to be a step-by-step in-depth on how I designed this app tutorial. I'm not going to talk on how I did each little thing throughout the UI because that will take an absolute eternity. Rather just just going to be, you know, walking through my design and showing you how I prototype this interface in Figma, but also keep in mind you can do the same technique in other design softwares like Adobe XD. So I hope you guys enjoy it and without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to Figma, this is where I design and prototype all my ideas. In case you don't remember, let's play the prototype workflow one time just as a quick refresher. While it might look like there's a lot going on, but it's probably not as complicated as it looks. As you can see, we have five iPhone mini frames. This is the main frame in which the user can see an overview of the app. It has two states, one with the rotating menu closed and one with the menu open. Over here on the right side, we have our secondary frame of a specific product, duplicated three times with different product image in each frame. And if I click on Command Y on the keyboard, it will show us the outline view. That is really helpful to view all the layers that are outside of our main frame, like this new drop cards layer and our rotation menu down here. Now for this prototype in breakdown, I've gone ahead and duplicated the whole page, but without the prototype connections and I've only left the two main frames. Hopefully this will make things a bit cleaner and easier to follow. Before I begin, please keep in mind that none of this will work unless you keep the same name for your layers across all frames. Okay, let's start easy and create a transition between these two frames. When the user clicks on one of the products cards here, we would like to transition to the second frame with all the product details and the option to buy it. First thing first, let's go to the prototype tab here on the top right side, select the product card and drag that plus icon to the second frame. In the interaction window, I'm going to leave the interaction on tab and I'm going to set the animation to slide in. I'm going to choose ease in and out and leave the duration on 300 milliseconds. Let's see how it works. I click on the background and under device, I'll choose iPhone 13 mini. I'll select the main frame and I'll add a flow starting point. So anytime I'll hit the preview play button, this will be my starting point. I'll click on the play button, tab on that card. And here you go, our second frame slides in, <laughs> nice. Let's go back to our project tab and do it again, but this time the other way around. So we like that anytime we click on this back button, our main frame will slide in. I select the back button, same as before, I leave the interaction on tab, and this time I set the animation to slide out, ease in and out. But before we hit play, we can hover over with the mouse to preview the animation from point A to point B. And I don't want our second frame to slide left when we hit on the back button, I actually want it to slide right. So I can simply change the direction to the right side. And now if we preview it and click on the product card, the second frame slides in from the left side. And if we click on the back button, it slides out to the right. Cool, pretty easy. Now let's take it up a notch. I like to make this product card scrollable. I actually made a whole video about vertical and horizontal scroll animation in Figma. I'll link it down below. But for now, let's just create horizontal scrolling. Okay, let's slide the second frame aside. And again, I'll hit on Command Y to go to the outline view. And as you can see, I have a couple of more cards right here. So I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and select all five cards. Right click on the mouse and I'm going to choose frame selection. The keyboard shortcut is option command G. Once I created this frame selection group, I can go right here under overflow scrolling and change it from no scrolling to horizontal scrolling. But before we preview this, we need to define the scrolling area borders. So I select the scrolling frame and drag it all the way to the right where our iPhone frame ends. Makes sense, right? Let's hit the play button and boom, we can scroll left and right. Next, let's create an image selection group for our product. I like this image to change every time we're gonna tab on a different image. Let's do it the smart way. First, I'm going to select the image and convert it to a component by hitting on this icon up here or using the keyboard shortcut option command K. And let's drag it aside for a moment. By the way, in-depth tutorial about component is coming soon, so stay tuned, but for now you can just follow along. Now, because this image is now a component, I can add a variant to it by clicking on this plus icon up here. I'll change the variant look by selecting it and I'll remove the yellow stroke and drop shadow. Let's change its name to off, select the other variant and change its name to on. 
When we do that, we're actually creating two states for our image, one selected and one unselected. If I hold option on the keyboard and drag an instant of that component, you'll see we get this on off switch right here, in which we can toggle between the two variants. Now, don't worry, you can make any changes to an instant without it affecting the original component and you'll understand in a moment why I did it this way. So I'll delete these other two images from my frame and position the component instant inside. Now I need to duplicate it, so I'll click on Command D, drag it aside and position it, and again on Command D, and this time Figma will position it automatically for me, which I absolutely love. Now I can select the middle one and click on the toggle to switch it off, and double click it to change the image inside. Let's click on Fill and give it the image we like. Same for the third image, switch it off and replace the image. Next, let's create that changing image. So I'll select the whole frame and duplicate it by hitting on Command D. And again, because we have three image options. In each frame, I'll make the changes to the big image and to the small image. I'll select the big image, go to Fill and replace it. I'll select the first small image and switch it off. And I'll select the middle image and switch it on. Same for the last frame change the big image, switch off the first small image, and switch on the last small image to match it to the big one. Now let's prototype it. I'll go to the prototype tab, select the middle image, and drag it to the next frame. In the interaction window, I'll leave the interaction on tab. For the animation, I'll select smart animate, easy in and out. And so now we have to repeat it and connect each small image to the right frame. I'll select the third one and drag the plus icon to the last frame and connect the other ones as well. Okay, now you can see all the connections. Let's hit on the play button, click on the product card. Let's select the second image, third image, and move between them. And cool, we're done with our good looking selection group. Okay, last interaction, my friends. I saved the best for last. Let's prototype that rotating menu down here in our main frame. As you can see, I created two variants to that floating action button here in the same way I did it for the small image tabs. If I select it, I have this toggle switch to change it from open to close. Now let's select the main frame and duplicate it. I'll move these other frames out of the way. I'm going to select the menu button in the first frame and switch it to on to display the on variant. And I'm going to select the whole menu I have here in a group and simply rotate it all the way to the right until I can't see it in the frame anymore. Again, if you like to make sure, click on Command Y and you can see all the layers in your frame, even the ones that are not visible. Let's prototype it. So I'll select the menu button and drag the plus icon to the second frame with the open menu. I'll leave the interaction on tab, the animation on Smart Animate. I'll change the Ease In to Ease In and Out Back and the duration to 500 milliseconds. And of course, let's do it the other way around. I select the menu button in the second frame and drag that plus icon back to the first frame. My friends, it's time to push the play button and see our prototype in full mode. I can click on the menu button to rotate it in and out. I can scroll left, right, select the product, change the image selection and go back. All right, so a little bit of a different video today. I hope you guys enjoyed this prototyping breakdown. If you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you follow my design work on Instagram. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.